Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahova, Second Swing Golf, joined by Thomas Campbell, a Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today we're in the Greenside Bunker and we're going to talk a little bit about buried lies in the Greenside Bunker. Uh, something that, you know, depending on the course it might not happen, but uh, certainly kind of frustrating right when you first see your ball, maybe in a fried leg lie or maybe even buried, and you don't really know what to do and you're kind of thinking, well, probably a bogey here works. And so Thomas is going to try and show us, hey, maybe it can be a par, maybe you can save uh, a shot here. So. Uh, Thomas, uh, first of all, how often does this happen to you? And I guess, what's your first reaction when this happens? And then what are the steps taking that you're taking to uh, you know, overcome it and try and get up and down? So you'll be surprised a plug lie happens more often than you think is going to happen. And it usually happens at the kind of the worst time. When yeah. You may have a good shot. It may have plugged on the edge of the bunker. Pin's just there. And you're like, oh, I had a great shot. And now I basically got screwed. So. Yeah got to find a way to limit limit the damage so first thing what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure I get the ball out of the sand so that's the first goal get the ball out of the sand and then I'm trying to get the chance to maybe make up and down that's definitely the two goals so I'm not really trying to hold it because right now we're we're in trouble we're just yeah. trying to make sure I get myself trying to limit the damage maybe make bogey at the worst so I'm going to try and teach how to hit a bunker shot more confidently when the ball is plugged okay now first steps here I, I personally I don't even have any idea I've uh, seen different ways of doing this. I've heard you close the club face, you, you hit way down on it. I mean, I've heard different things. So uh, I, ha I don't have a formula for myself that works. Of course, I'm just an amateur and a professional's here. So what are the steps you're taking when you see a lie like that or something similar? In the so the formula I like to use is I like to get more vertical with the club. So I'm really trying to feel like I'm kind of hitting down the ball. I'm, it's almost like I'm chopping wood. So I'm using okay. an axe trying to chop wood. So I'm trying to get the ball to kind of hit down, hit the ground, and have that ball kind of pop out of the air. I'm not trying to put it out. I'm not trying to just smack it as hard as I possibly can. Yeah. I'm trying to get it so it floats out of the sand and then kind of rolls out towards the Okay. Yeah. So based on what you're saying there, uh, there's not a ton of, you know, the club face is not going to be as open, right? Or it won't be as lofted at the back. And should not spin as much as a traditional bunker shot. Yeah, the ball will not spin because you can't really get the grooves on the golf ball and also when it's buried down there, it's really hard to generate any kind of spin on the ball. Yeah. So it's going to come out with top spin. Okay, okay. okay. So now stance-wise and, um, you know, setting up to the golf shot, what is different about this versus a traditional golf shot? So I do stand pretty similar. I stand a little bit open to the target. I still have my face ever so slightly open. Okay. So I'm hitting a, a bunker shot. But I do stand a little bit closer because I'm trying to get a little bit more vertical. Okay. If I stand too far away, it's hard for me to get vertical. Yeah. I'm to take the ball on a flat, the club on a flatter swing path. So I'm trying to get a little bit closer to the ball, I'm trying to get a little bit more vertical. So I will actually do a few rehearsals here where I'm trying to feel like that club's just kind of going straight up in front of me here. Okay. So I'm imagining kind of like now that I'm kind of like chopping wood. Yeah. I may actually walk out of the bunker and actually just do that a couple of times here and just feel like I'm just really trying to chop down on, on that on that thing here just to get the feeling of what is because it's like so I can't play a can't do a practice swing in the sand right and then I'm just trusting that the ball this club is going to get down by that ball and is going to kind of pop it up okay. and let it release to the hole let's see it this is a nasty lie <laughs> who generated this plug lie for me <laughs> See, you're out and you got a chance to par. Out and I got a chance to par, yeah. So essentially the big difference is the change in attacking is what yeah, I'm a lot here. steeper. A yeah. lot steeper. Yeah. So I'm really trying to feel like I'm just kind of chopping. I mean, we don't have it. track man numbers to measure <laughs> that right now, but you but can I'm, see. I'm taking some feel. sand. Yes. I'm definitely taking some sand. That's a deeper divot or chunk of sand than I've seen with the other ones. Yeah. And that's part of this too is it's going to be a little unpredictable uh, it is. when it comes out of there so like you said you're trying to limit the damage when you get in this scenario uh, and not turn this into something where you're making a double or triple instead uh, make it a bogey at worst scenario yep trying to get this thing on the green at least give myself a, a good chance mm -hmm.
that one was unpredictable, but it came out with some top spin on it, so it still released out towards the hole. See, look at that, you still got a chance. That's probably what, six to eight feet there for your par, so. Yeah. Thomas, one thing I've noticed, you are like, you know, when you hit the ground, you're, the club almost stops moving. Like, you don't kind of follow through up high like you would on a traditional shot. You're stopping almost at the ball. What is the reason for that? You know, I'm trying to generate some energy to try and get that thing to kind of pop out. So I'm kind of chopping the chopping wood and just letting that thing kind of hitting the ground, have the ball kind of pop up in the air and then go. If I try to swing too hard at it, if I catch it a little bit thin or a little heavy, it could go flying over the green yeah. or it could not even get out, out of the sand there too. So I'm really just trying to control have that feeling of that, that ball kind of popping up and then just releasing okay. towards the hole. So also in the instance when it's a, you get a plug lie on the upslope of the sand, so the ball might kind of come in, really kind of plug into the, into the ground there. What you've got to do is because you're on an upslope, you actually have to swing a little bit harder. So okay. If I wasn't going to swing very, very hard at it, it may not get out of the sand. I still want to get vertical on it, so this may kind of pop up a little bit higher compared to the other shots. Look at that, because you're trying to make sure that ball gets high enough right away to get over the lip. Yep. Whereas, because if it's closer to the lip, down here you have a little bit more room to kind of get that ball up and over. But if you're that close uh, on that up slope there, you got to make sure it gets up high enough. Yeah, it's actually a little bit easier when you do. When I see my ball plugged in a, in a bunker and I see that it's on an up slope, that's my first chance. I'm like, well, I've got a chance here. Because okay. I've got a little, I'm using that slope to help me to get the ball out of the sand and up in the air. Okay. If it's plugged in the middle of a, of a bunker where there's not much sand in there, then I've got to make sure that I really get good contact on it. You have a little bit more leeway when you have a plug lie sure. in the upslope of the bunker. Sure. Well, Thomas, these were some great pointers for, you know, of course, that scenario on the course where ball plugs. And sometimes golfers don't really know how to approach that. But we got a few pointers here. Uh, and Thomas has shown us, hopefully, how to save par from a situation like that. So, Thomas, thank you for showing us this situation here and uh, showing us how to swing at it. Yeah, not a problem. Mm -hmm.